Welcome, Cleaning Nation, to another episode of the Growman Cleaning Company podcast. If you are looking to earn more, work less, have the cleaning company that you've actually always wanted, you, my friend, are in the right place. If you want more than just 20 minutes of amazingness that you're going to find here in this podcast, go to growmycleaningcompany.com for all of our fantastic resources. Uh, you can go to growmycleaningcompany.com live to get details on our next live event where you can hang out with me, Natalie, and your fellow Cleaning Nation members. Today, we are chatting with Sandy Sandoval. And uh, if you haven't tried saying that name, say it. It's a ton of fun. Sandy Sandoval from CNA Cleaning Services. CNA has been serving the Carpentersville, Illinois uh, area with commercial cleaning services for the last three years. If you want to reach out to Sandy and her team, you can get a hold of them at www.ca-cleaningservice.com. Sandy, welcome to the show. Thank you. So Sandy, how on God's green earth did you get into the cleaning business and how did you wander into our little corner of the world at Cleaning Nation? Oh my goodness. Uh, well, I am a single mom of two kids, um, young single mom of two kids. And, um, <laughs> Wait, does that mean that you're was, does that mean that you're young or the kids are young? Uh, both of us, <laughs> all of us, <laughs> all, all right, of so, us, as a matter of fact. So Sandy's um, fifteen and, and her kids are four and set. No, just kidding. Go. <laughs> 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 would you like to Would you like to share your your kids' names and ages with the rest of the world? Uh, yes, uh, my oldest is Cody. He is twelve years old, and my little one is Aiden, and he is eight years old. Well, you're very good at naming kids, and uh, I have a three-year-old, so 12 and 8 aren't even close to young. You must be young. The, the 12 and 8, those are very average age kids. Yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> but with very cute names. Yeah, it'd been funny if you're like, yeah, well, Cody's 46. I'm like, whoa, what, that just spun out of control. <laughs> um, well, as some of you know, I was raised by a an amazing single mom and have a big, big heart. for. And that was just me, and I was a huge pain in the neck. So I could not imagine – and my mom had a job, not a business. So I could not imagine um, Sandy – Having two kids and a business, you are a wonder woman to me. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, uh, yeah, um, it's definitely a um, young single mom. I worked in the car business for about 10 years. Um, what did you do in the car business? Like I, was, I had a car dealership. What did yes. you do in the car business? I did accounts payable and receivable. Oh, the worst job. In, well, maybe not the worst job, but yes. the most boring yes. job. There's so many fun <laughs> jobs in the car business. Payables and receivables, the worst. <laughs> I know. Um, I think so, title yeah, works. The only already... step down would be title work. That's even worse, but pretty low, sister. So <laughs> we're, we're glad we got you yeah. out. Keep going. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I did accounts payable and receivable for about 10 years. Um, definitely felt um, very underappreciated and very underpaid. Um, so living paycheck to paycheck was just not making ends meet. Uh, definitely fell through um, some very hard financial um points in my life where I said, you know, something's got to give. And, um, I obviously paying bills. I, I, I noticed some of the bills that were paying to some of our janitorial companies. And I said, you know what, I can do a better job. Definitely give them better service. Let's, let's do this. All right. You <laughs> so absolutely, that's, how, that's how we started. You absolutely do not have to answer this, but I'm just interested if you're willing to answer, if not, you won't hurt my feelings at all. Do you remember mm -hmm. how much you were paying, they're not you, the, the company and you for the company was paying for janitorial services versus what your salary was on a monthly basis? I would love to know if the janitor staff was making more than you were just to clean. Do you remember that or is that too they crazy were, of a question? Yes, <laughs> um, they, were, <laughs> they were getting paid about $3,600 a month and I was making about uh, $1,800 a month. So they were making twice as much and you were going... There's yes. no way they're here 80 hours a week. And I know I'm here 40 hours a week. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and on top of that brain damage. So absolutely. Yeah. I, I'm like, something's got to give, you know, let's give this a try. Why not? Um, well, congratulations. So yeah, that, that's, how we, that's how I started. 92% <laughs> of the world would have paid that bill every month and never thought anything of it. And I love that you went, hold on. I'm fine when we pay the body shop 10 grand because I don't know how to do body work, but the cleaning company. I know, I, I know, I could do this. So that's awesome. I'm, that's so cool. And then, did you uh, have you have you gotten a car dealership yet as a as a customer? Yeah, that was my first one. That was oh. my first one. Um, it was actually one of the ones that I worked for because it was it's an auto group, so it was four dealerships. And the one that I worked for, um, well, I actually worked for all four of them doing the payables and receivables. But the one mainly that I got my foot in the door was one of the ones that we did have and. Yeah, it was the dealership. 
Good for you. So I love that you just absolutely <laughs> took action. You're like, listen, I do this. You could probably get someone to change to, to do it for me instead of that. Maybe you're not happy with the janitorial. Let me slide in there. What a bang, what a bang. I've doubled my income. Yeah. <laughs> a girl. That is so cool. Um, all right. Well, I can't wait to support you in any way I can. What's going on in your world that I could give you some help today, Sandy? Okay. So I have two I currently have two accounts that we service. Um and you know, they're getting great service. Um, they're paying what they're supposed to be paying, and they seem to want more every single time and not want to pay for um, all these extra services that they want. So I I kind of want to know how can I approach this customer in a way where we don't sound rude and, you know, we how to make them understand that we're, you know, we're all in the business to make money and it's not a bad, profit's not a bad word. So how can I, how can I bring this to their attention? without sounding like a jerk. Okay, I love that question because I, I got to imagine well over 80% of Cleaning Nation at this very moment has at least one customer, if not many customers, that uh, are paying for X and just want ABC, XYZ, and uh, you to do their kids' homework in your spare time. So that's a great question. First and foremost, I love the transparency. Uh, I w the, the attitude, just as you were explaining it, is the attitude I would take with them when you're like, hey, profit's not a bad word. I'm not trying to... You know, it's not like I've got my private jet in the Bahamas and you guys are paying for it. Um, I'm trying to make a fair profit and we want to do a good job and, and that's that. So that transparency is good. Um, I, I, you don't have to do this, but I've never had a problem when it comes to the cleaning business sharing my, um, my margins. And again, if you've been listening to the show, we, you know that we're looking for a 20% uh, profit margin. I mean, it doesn't have to be exactly on, but when you tell them, you know, hey, and maybe you're making less, you're like, hey, we're, for the work that we've agreed to do or contracted to do, we make... 15, 20%, whatever it is for us to do extra, um, you know, we might be able to do it for a little bit, but then we're going to get burnt out and then you're going to have to get a new cleaner and they probably won't do the work and they might charge more and it's just a big headache. So let's, let's nip this in the bud. So that transparency of kind of, Hey, I'm not trying to take advantage or, or slink out of doing work. Uh, but we do need to get paid fair and that's going to be what's best for you is going to be kind of the best overreaching, um, attitude. So that's first. Second, um, and this won't help you now, but actually it can help you now. Anytime you start an account, um, I, you want to have as part of the service agreement. So I like having very short, easy service agreements so it doesn't have to go to legal and there's not a 20-page document that's all whatever because uh, it's probably never going to go to court anyway. But as an addendum to the short, simple service agreement, I always like having here's what you get and here's what you don't get. And I like covering both. Um, and this also works when you have levels of service, right? So this can go all the way back to the bid. So when you bid and you're listening carefully to what they want, um, and I think we cover this, or we do cover this in step six of the clean profit method. Um, you want to make sure that you understand their real pain and come with a solution to solve it. Um, oftentimes what they want and what their budget will allow are different. So in that case, I recommend you doing two bids, right? So you'd say, well, for us to do everything that you want, A, B, C, D, and E, um, it's five grand a month. You told me your budget was 3,500. So for, to get everything you want, A, B, C, D, and D, and E, it's 5,000. If you want us to uh, stay within your budget of the 3,500, we can do that, but you only get A, B, and C. So I'll give them a two-pronged budget um, or two-pronged number, one that fits. And again, ideally, we can do everything they want for the number that they, for, the, for their budget. But when we can't, instead of just giving up, we give them two bids, uh, one that covers their budget and one that covers their needs, and we let them decide. Um, so that's how I start. Once we do that, I always, uh, in the service agreement again have an addendum of what, what we do and what we don't do and we can just refer to that and I shouldn't say what we do and what we don't do what we do for the money that you're paying now and what would cost extra right so that way when they come to you and go will you do a b and c you just pull out the service agreement and say hey this is already um yes we're happy to do it and as as right on the agreement that you signed uh, we'll just we'll just add it to your bill um, and you're going, well that's a great idea for the next customers jerk but these customers I don't have that so <laughs> Uh, the reason I bring all that up is you can still go back and get it, right? You can just go back and, and first and foremost, always take the blame, right? So we never blame them. You told them what you'd charge them. Uh, they're paying it. Uh, it's human nature to kind of want more and more and more and not really think about the other guy. So I don't think they're probably trying to take advantage. They're just like, this is what we want. So if you just go to them and go, hey, I made a mistake. If you start with, hey, I made a mistake, very rarely are people going to get mad at you. When you say, hey, you made a mistake mm -hmm. or you're screwing me or you're cheating me or anything like that, you're going to get defend. They're going to get, you're going to get a defensive response immediately. But if you start a conversation with, Hey, I made a mistake and just say, Hey, now, and if you're going to take the policy I just gave you, you can honestly say, Hey, right now for all of our customers, we um, have a clear list of what we do and what we don't do. And I don't think we, we did that for you. So I'd like to create that. And then you can just ask them to recreate it now. Um, 
for to go forward and just say, hey, I'm sorry, I screwed up. When we did it, I was so excited to get the job. Uh, I wasn't really clear on what we did, and now it's kind of, we've got some scope creep going, and um, I just want to get it on paper. Is that okay? And uh, create that list now. Uh, so far, so good? Uh, yeah. Um, actually, we do, uh, with all of our um, service agreements, we do have a breakdown of everything that's going to be done in every single room, um, in every single room. So it's, it's a, kind of just in black and white for them. And we do have a section that says additional services. Um, a call, you know, let us know if you want additional services so we can give you a price. So we do have that broken down in our service agreement that, you know, like telling grout cleaning is extra, um, stripping and waxing, it's extra. Great. Um, so if, so, if you've already got that, when they ask for the extra stuff, you just go, oh, we'd love to do that. Here's the price. Okay. Yeah, because again, good news is I don't know that they're looking for something for free. And if they are, maybe they're not our best customers, right? We don't want people that are trying to actively take advantage of us. Uh, so if that's not the case, they're just regular people that want extra service. And, you know, as long as you keep doing it, just like them, they're a car dealership, right? If, if I buy a car and I'm like, oh, will you throw in a strip and wax? Sure, or not strip and wax. Uh, a wax. <laughs> Sorry, I'm thinking floors, <laughs> not cars. Uh, you know, sealant, sure. Hey, can I get a warranty? Sure, can I, whatever. And if I, you know, they're, they're gonna try and help me to the best of their ability, but at some point they're like, hey, Chuckles, that costs money. And so they get it. They know that extra services cost extra money. So um, if you've already got it, so you've done the hard work by having it written down. When they ask for it, go, absolutely, um, here's the price. And if they give you any grief, go, oh, I'm so sorry. And again, always, if you always take the blame for yourself, it's hard for them to get angry. I'm so sorry, I should have been clear. Uh, in the service agreement, we have that all written out and you probably don't have that handy, which is fine. If you want, I can send over a, a copy for you, um, but we wanna make sure that we get you taken care of. So if you've already got it uh, lined out, you've, you've done the, the heavy lifting, you're just gonna hold them to the agreement that they've already signed. Very hard for them to get upset for you to have them do the thing that they signed saying they would do. Right. That makes sense. So the last two quick things I'll give you is people, their favorite thing is them. And they're really not interested in things that are not them. So, right. When you, and that's all of us, right? You, me, uh, certainly your customers. So we don't want to blame them for that because they're just being humans. Um, so anytime we're having this kind of conversation, if we frame it around us, they, they lose interest real quick. Well, I've got kids to feed and we do this and we don't, and it affects me like this and I don't want they're, they, they, they fuzz out. They're not interested. But if we start talking about them mm -hmm. and their needs, they're really interested. So again, the conversation would be, and first of all, I honestly think if, if you've already gotten the contract, you just say, yeah, here's the price. And that's, that's the end of that. But in case there's people listening that don't have in the contract, I want to make sure we get them taken care of as well. We're going to frame everything for how their life is going to be better. So I kind of touched on it uh, at the beginning, but I didn't say, I didn't give the backstory. So the backstory is I, you'd say something like, Hey, the reason we are doing this is because you want this service and you don't want to have to get another person. And if, if this keeps happening, we're going to get burnt out or not make any money. And then we're going to have to raise all the prices, whether you want the services or not, and then you might not do it. And then you're going to have to find a new cleaning company. You know what a big headache it is. And you don't like see how many use there are in there versus I. So you want to make sure the conversation right. is based on how their life's going to be better. Cause that's really what they want. They, currently think mm -hmm. if I pay you a dollar and you do all the cleaning services perfectly, my life will be better, right? I'll look, I'll save money for mm -hmm. the dealership and I'll look good. But when they get the reality of, if I pay you a dollar, you're going to quit. And then I'm going to find someone else that's probably worse than you are, who might be more money than you're charging me now. I don't, my life is going to be worse, right? So we, we just want to make sure we explain it. You based, not me based. Does that make sense? That makes perfect sense. I'm keep, I keep nodding my head. I'm like, yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like the virtual nod. That's all I could ever ask for. <laughs> Uh, all right, last quick thing I'll give you is the big thing is you started with all, with that transparency, which is great in terms of um, here I am. I'm not trying to take advantage. I'm not all nervous. That kind of, oh, hey, Sandy, I've got a big conversation. You might want to sit down. I'm really sorry, but we just can't. And oh, you know, that, that's, that, that kind of clutching your pearls real stressed out thing is going to stress them out. If you just come like you did, hey, profit's not a bad word. I'm not trying to screw you, but brother, I need to make a buck just like you. That's a, that's a pretty, mm -hmm. that's a great place to come from. Um, but ultimately it's your party. A lot of people have this guilt associated with they're such nice people or they're good or somehow if I, if I raise prices on anybody, I'm taking advantage. Uh, certainly not the case, right? If, if, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it should cost a thousand dollars and you're charging them $27,000, uh, because they're stupid or because you're misleading them or somehow you're, you're manipulating their, their reality. Um, that's not, that's not right. But if you're making a fair profit and who's to say what a fair profit is, but I promise you they're not going to pay an unfair profit. There's nothing wrong with that. So if you go in thinking you're tricking someone or sneaking, <laughs> getting away with something, that's certainly not going to serve you. But, um, if you just go in like you have with that transparency and remember it's your party, right? And, and what if they quit? What if, what if they get mad? Well, then they'll get mad or they'll quit, right? You just, you'll go get another customer. It's fine, right? They're not, if they're not paying enough and you're not making any money, they're not a customer. They're just people that are making you work for free. So, um, 
Okay. That's that's what I got to say. Any thoughts or questions before we hit the lightning round? No, but I think you've pretty much covered it all. All right, beautiful. So, uh, Clean Nation, as we hit the lightning round, it's brought to you by our next live event. We are going to hang out, uh, myself and 16 of you guys. We limit it. I interview everybody that comes. You can't get in without talking to me first and getting invited. Uh, it's three days of automating your cleaning company, creating systems. And uh, don't tell anyone, but we have a crap ton of fun, more time than we probably should. If you want the details on that bad boy, go to growmycleaningcompany.com forward slash live for all the details. Uh, this is probably the favorite thing I do uh, in a year. It's so selfish because I love hanging out with you guys. As much as I'm enjoying talking with Sandy on the phone, it is so much more fun when we can role play, get together, and uh, just watch everybody grow uh, in a three-day deal. So growmycleaningcompany.com forward slash live is where you go for that. And I cannot, uh, there's 16 of you out there that we are gonna get to hang out and be BFFs and I'm already looking forward to it. All right, let's hit the lightning round. Sandy, what is the best piece of advice you've ever received, either personally or professionally? um find a mentor definitely find a mentor um i and that actually came from the show um wish i would have known that a long time ago um surround yourself by people that um are sharing the same passion that you are and that have accomplished the goals that you want to accomplish that way it's more tangible for you and it, it's they're there you, they've already accomplished it and you can they can guide you through it they can definitely guide you through that process and it just makes it a lot more easier <laughs> Sandy, I, God bless America. I couldn't agree more. Um, when I started, when I bought my first cleaning business, Service Master, it was, <laughs> so you're a young single mom. I'm an old business owner. <laughs> it was 97, I think. So God, we're pushing uh, 20 years. Um, uh, maybe even earlier than that, maybe 96, but it was in the mid to late nineties. And um, there was no internet or, I mean, there was, but it was, you know, where you plugged into the computer and you have to turn off your phone line because it was taking the phone line and all say I would have I would have uh, cut off my arm and beat a baby seal with it if I could have gotten a mentor to walk me through how to grow this business uh, and now people take it so casually so you're absolutely right whether it's health or fitness or business or parenting or relationships or high jump whatever you want to get good at right. if there's someone that's already good at it and is willing to help you pay them in hugs or money or time or whatever they need to help you. Um, I would do, I, I just, it's, it makes no sense to me. And this is just so you guys know, I've spent over a hundred thousand dollars on my education from mentors and, uh, mastermind groups and really learning. And uh, that is just, gosh, if you just do one thing, that's probably it. If you just find people that are living the life that you want in that degree, right? My, my personal trainer Absolutely. is in great shape. I might not listen to him when it comes to business and that's okay. <laughs> and my business coach might be a genius and business coach when I be on his fifth marriage. I'm probably not going to listen to him when it comes to relationships. So I'm not saying, you know, one person for everything, but, um, the best of the best always have coaches. There are no exceptions to that rule. Question number two, what's the biggest mistake you've made in the cleaning business? So we can all, uh, have you be our little mini coach right now and we can learn from your mistake. Um, Oh boy. Um, definitely taking on jobs that I knew were in, that I was in over my head and I went ahead and I did it anyways. And, um, it didn't turn out that well. So, um, definitely learned from my mistake. Um, haven't done it again. <laughs> well, um, I have a follow-up question. Cause that's a really, uh, that's, that's a really, that can be good or bad, right? You don't just turn them down cause you may not grow, but I get you take them on. You could sink. So if you had the opportunity to do it again, would you just flat out not take the jobs or is there a way you still would have taken them, but just kind of done it differently? Uh, I would have taken them, just done it differently. Um, definitely done my research prior to, um, you know, doing the job, but yeah, I would definitely do it again, just in a different way. So give, give us the different, cause there's, I promise the reason I asked this is someone right now considering a job that's way too big for them. What, like, what, what's the big pitfall that you had that you can kind of share so they can maybe, um, skip that pitfall and fall into another one. <laughs> um, uh, for, for example, like my mistake was, um, I wouldn't, you know, I took on a, a restaurant. Um, I wasn't familiar on how to clean, let's just, an oven, you know, how to take the oven apart, how to, how to clean it properly, what chemicals to use in the oven, you know, um, had I known, um, what chemicals would have made my life easier or, um, maybe found somebody that knew how to put an oven apart, um, would have just made things so much more easier. So again, of, you know, sitting there breaking my head, trying to figure it out on my own. So finding a mentor, even in that, right. You say I would have yeah, found someone absolutely. that was really good at restaurants and, gotten their feedback. So I think that's, that Absolutely. ties in really nicely with, with the first one. All right. Last thing I just do this cause I love to read and selfishly, I want to know what all the good books you guys are reading so I can read them. What's the best book you've read in the last year, Sandy? Um, 
the one that actually I just recently finished. Um, it's Life in Half a Second. It's Love by it. Michael Mike Michael Wicks, I believe. And it, it just I helped, know. Th- um, it just, I think I know that guy. I'm gonna Google that thing. Yeah. Yeah, I went to. Uh, if it's who I'm thinking of, and I can't say his last name either, but I, yeah, I, I'm pretty. Life in Half a Second. I'm Googling Michael Wick. Michael Wick. It's such a great book, Michael Wick. Oh no, I don't know him. Sorry it's about that. It's one word. Okay, so Life in Half a Second. Oh, Michael Wicks yeah. is his last name. I'm checking out and see if I know yeah. this guy. Life in Half, which would be great if I call him and be like, hey, dude, <laughs> I haven't talked to you in a while, but apparently you wrote a book and I had to find out from someone else. Um, all right. <laughs> so Life in Half a Second, why is it awesome? Yeah, I do know that guy. God bless America. Good for him. Um, all right, perfect. And I love, I love the title. Give us a, a one-sentence uh, uh, summary, if you could. Um, it's just a, it helps lead the path to your goals and aspirations and it just kind of kind of breaks it down on how you can accomplish that um um it's it's such a great book i definitely definitely a life changer for me um it really opened up um a lot of ideas that i didn't even think you know were possible so yeah it's a great book i definitely highly recommend it um yeah um life in half second beautiful and i just looked it up it's actually matthew Michael Witz, and I actually know him, Michael, Ma- Michael Witz, but it's not him. So it's Matthew Michael Witz is the guy that uh, is the name of the book uh, or the author of the book. Sandy, thank you so much for joining us. I love your story. I love your passion. Uh, I appreciate you. I know Cleaning Nation appreciates you. Cleaning Nation, if you want to check out Sandy's show notes page, uh, the special on-demand training I just made for you, uh, all of the resources that we have, uh, there is so much, so, 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 so many resources at growmycleaningcompany.com. It is a, uh, it could be your digital mentor, just like we talked about right now, a ton of free stuff. Check it out now. I will see you there. Congratulations, you are now 16% smarter. Still can't get enough cleaning goodness? Go to www.growmycleaningcompany.com for more of the good stuff. Ever want to be rich and famous? Owners of cleaning companies as well as industry experts can apply to be featured on the show by emailing our producer Natalie at support at growmycleaningcompany.com. Until then, don't miss out on all the latest cleaning industry lovin' at www.growmycleaningcompany.com. Check it out now.